I don't need an arbor press. Usually I start a project with a weakness in my current toolset that I'd like to overcome. But this project manifested more out of curiosity than a specific need. How would my concrete forms hold up to the stress? And how much force could I actually get out of 3D printed gears? My goal for this project was 100 kilos of force. Obviously there's no point aiming for a ton or even half that, but you can get these tiny 100 kilo presses that seemed like a more attainable goal. To measure this goal, I made an IED. This improvised experimentation device is the remains of a bathroom scale that I've compacted for easier testing. Version 1 was me hoping that I could be lazy and just use the base from the tapping arm. It sucked, as expected, but I lost nothing doing it so this was worth a shot. I maxed it out at 40 kilos. Version 2 was an entirely new design, and it did not go well. The following process is a lesson in complacency. At this stage, I was kind of disinterested and expected it to be a simple task. Because of this, I didn't put in as much consideration as I would into something like the drill press, leading to issues like forgetting to put holes into the base and making others the wrong size resulting in inserts that don't fit properly. Following this, make sure to forget the supporting mesh and finish the build with not mixing enough concrete, running out, and then just making a big mess of everything. Wrap it all up with not waiting for the concrete to set and immediately breaking the press using less force than the original unoptimized design. These things happen, Despite my failings, this uh, prototype had made me more excited for the project. Using it was a lot of fun, even in its broken state. Going back to the drawing board, I accepted that I would actually have to think a bit. In hindsight, version 1 was always going to fail. The solution to this was simple and should have been obvious. Triumphs. With this extra reinforcement, the force was now concentrated on the thickest part of the column, instead of the thinnest. Makes sense. While we're here, let's talk gears. There are plenty of videos testing printed gears. We know helical are the strongest. There are still a couple of things I'm doing differently here. Firstly, instead of the common square axle, I'm using two bolts. Unlike a square axle, there is no way these bolts are going to tear out of the gear. It guarantees that the teeth will be the weakest point. Secondly, I'm printing my rack standing up. Common advice would be to lay it on its side, but for a press like this, we don't want that. Over time, the layers will split with how the force is applied. Printing it upright also allows us to install a bolt running the length of the rack to further compress the layers and allow us to mount tools on the end. The actual build begins, as always, with some printed components. The base of this one is pretty simple, beginning with a few heated inserts. Moving on to the bottom half, I was out of black, so after some quick spray paint, we can install a M8 bolt and coupling nut. At this point, we also install two lengths of M8 threaded rod that I've added to the design since filming this. With that complete, the two halves can be joined together. Nice. Moving up to the head, we use a pick to insert a M6 coupling nut, which is then tightened in place. This is mirrored, then two 130mm M6 bolts are installed from the rear of the head. Moving to the back of the machine, two more lengths of M6 threaded rod are installed. These are secured in place with a nut. Finally, another two lengths of M8 rod are prepared with coupling nuts, before being installed into the base. Now, the entire column can slide over the rods before being bolted in place. 
At this point I also install some steel mesh. After sealing all the seams with super glue and the threaded rod temporarily with hot glue, the form is ready for concrete. I'm using a pre-mixed high strength bag that I've sifted the aggregate out of. You can see I've really learnt a lot since my first concrete tools. I use a much more wet mixture and have just one filling point. The base has a few small holes to let water out, but that's it. This results in far less mess than my earlier designs. The next day, the partially set concrete is scraped off to create a nice surface, before the form is left to set for at least a week. This goes on like that. The rack we prepared earlier can now be installed. The temp glue is peeled back and the head slid on and tightened in place. With a length of 8mm bar, the press is now ready to use. Okay, let's try this again. First we do that. Oh, come on! No! Oh, it was so close to 100! What broke? What failed? I think it was the gear to- yeah. I think it was the rack. I'm okay- that was- come on, can we call that 100? Can we call that 100? 98.9 kilos of force. Comedically close to the goal of 100 kilos. Realistically, it felt fine to use up until around 80 kilos. These were interesting numbers nonetheless. It was more force than I expected from small printed gears like this. The helical gear also took zero damage. It was all in the rack. Now I'm kinda curious. Just how much force could these gears take? One nice thing about breaking version 1 is that I could get some experience using it while making version 2. Reflecting on this experience, I went ahead and made some basic tooling that would make the press far easier to use. I've made three so far that can be stored in a rack on the side of the press. All three started as bolts, since that gave me a lot of the geometry I needed. The first is a simple narrow tip. While installing the magnets, I needed something like this as the magnet surface was not flush with the part. The second will probably be my most used, and is a plain wide head. While press fitting parts, which is probably what I'll use this for the most, I found them getting pushed on an angle, and this should fix that. I also tried using this to stamp leather with surprisingly alright results, but realistically a G-clamp is just more useful. Finally, a pointed tip. I don't have a specific need for this, but there are a few I can think of, like punching holes or creating flares. I tried and failed to harden the tip, so I'll have to learn and experiment more before I can really use this one. Here's the cost breakdown, another pretty cheap one. It's a replacement for like a half ton press, and isn't even that much cheaper, but compared to the model making presses we store at the start, it's literally one tenth the cost. Overall I'm happy with this project, and I think I'll find myself using it more than expected. That being said, you should probably just buy a steel arbor press. Not everything makes sense to 3D print. Thank you to my patrons, and to you, as always, for watching.